Father, bless us now as we preach the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Allow me to begin this message by saying that the Lord Jesus Christ, as I speak, is giving sight to some and blinding or blindness. To others. He's giving sight to some and blinding others. Christ came into the world to give spiritual eyes to some and to close others. It all depends, hear me well, on how you respond to God's truth when it is presented to you. In the 8 a.m. class, and I'll reference it because where we are in the class today lines up with what I'm talking about. We're studying the seventh chapter of the book of Jeremiah. And the Bible is such an amazing book. When, when God gave us to study Jeremiah 7, I had no idea that Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, Je Jeremiah just... All of the headlines, everything that's going on uh, today are exactly, they, they are just like what took place in Jeremiah's day. And we, we, we were studying and, and looking at how Jeremiah preached to them. And I said that hearing the word is similar to what happened way back in the days of Genesis when the man who is credited with building the first civilization, the first cities, the first uh, buildings, and infrastructure, the mighty Nimrod. Nimrod was built the first cities. Nimrod was a hunter. He was a brilliant man who lost his mind. You know he lost his mind because Nimrod tried to hunt God. He tried to find God as one would try to find a wild beast and kill it. Nimrod had a game. Nim from Nimrod we get the, the game hide and go see. Uh, but Nimrod played a little differently from the way we play. When Nimrod tapped you on the shoulder, that meant you were it. He would give you a certain amount of time to hide. But if he found you, when he found you, he would kill you. You couldn't ignore Nimrod's tact. You couldn't shrug your shoulders and say, I don't want to play. No, you're it. Okay? Now, if you don't hide, you're going to be an easy kill. But either way, you're it. When the gospel and God's truth is preached to you, when it is presented to you, when you hear it, whether you know it or not, you're it. You can't shrug it off and act like you haven't heard it. You can't pretend that it hadn't been presented. You're it. And how you respond to it 
determines whether God will respond to you with giving you greater insight and knowledge of his truth or blindness and darkness. Everybody has to respond to God's truth. You can't hear it and act like you haven't heard it. Are you with me? We studied today where God said to Israel, to Judah, you have made my house a den of robbers. And what we discovered about the den of robbers is that the, 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 the saints would go to church, to the temple. They would worship the Lord. They would hear the word. But they also committed adultery. They also stole. They were also violent. They also worshiped other gods. They brought all kinds of wickedness into the temple. So the Lord said that the temple is a den of robbers. And uh, what that literally means is the robbers, between the time they commit their robbery, they go to their den and rest. They hold up in their den. They chill out at the, in their den then they go out and do their robbery. While they're in their den, they are planning to rob. While in the den, they do not intend to give up robbery. They know while they're in their den that they're going to rob somebody. He said, you have made this temple a den of thieves. Yes, sir. They knew before service that after service that they were going to commit adultery. They knew before service that after service they were going to worship other gods. They knew before service that after service whatever wickedness they had planned to do before service they were still going to do it after service. So the service had no effect on them. They heard the word, but they wouldn't respond to it. They were robbers when they went in. And they were robbers when they went out. I wonder if upper room is a den of robbers. Are we set to do the, are we just as set to do wickedness after service? As we were before service. I'm not getting any help. Or does the word of God have any effect at all? And that was his indictment. The word had no effect on them. Cussing before service. The Lord moved. The Holy Ghost fell. All that stuff. I still got a cussing problem. Oh my. I was a thief when I went in. I was a thief when we did uh, the affirmation of faith. A thief with the opening prayer. And no matter what happened in between, still a thief at the benediction. That means that all this was for you was a den. You just robber. You just hung out. You spent your time, but you left here unchanged. That's the den of robbers. The word of God is supposed to have an effect on us. Praise the Lord. If we receive it, then spirit, our spiritual enlightenment 
will increase. And a greater understanding of God's truth will be given to us. However, when we reject it, the result is even greater spiritual blindness. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 through 4 says this, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. See, when you hear it and choose not to believe it, Satan, the God of this world, blinds you. Lord God. It says the, uh, to them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You are responsible for your response to God's word. Don't let the devil pull you in deeper darkness by simply saying, I don't want to hear it. I don't want this. I have plenty of time. I'm young. I'll get saved when I get ready. I said to someone this the other day, I said, you should talk to people who work in hospice. Talk to people who work with the death and dying. They'll tell you, there are not many deathbed confessions. You know why? People don't turn to God. They turn to who and what they trusted and known the most. I've heard stories of how people were dying and bedridden. And literally leaped out the bed and jumped, almost jumped out the window trying to get away from who and what came to get them when they got ready to die. And they still didn't call upon the Lord. Why? Because blindness was given to them. God bless you, sir. Blindness was given to them. For when they had time, to say yes, they wouldn't. So even on their deathbed, and in some of these prayers, they, they ain't even real. We, you know, uh, I got my business fixed. What does that mean? There's no business fix in the Bible. No, you either got saved or you didn't. People turn that there is a price to be paid. Hear me today for ignoring God's truth. No one hears the gospel and, uh, and, and, and as a result of it, leave unscathed. Heaven and hell is waiting to see how you respond to what you've heard. Because you've got to respond to it. You can't treat it like you hadn't heard it. I'm going to preach today. Mm. By, we see this pattern of acceptance and light versus rejection and blindness uh, in 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. 1 Corinthians 1 and 18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish. Those who reject it, it's foolishness. But to us which are saved, it is the power of God. God Almighty, hallelujah, two people sitting on the same pew, hears the same gospel, one person hears gibberish, and they hear foolishness, but another person hears the most delightful, the most beautiful sound that there is, they hear the power of God. Every time I read this passage, it takes me back to 1977, 78, 79, sitting on the back row on the choir singing tenor and at the Temple Church of God in Christ and Elder Turner would walk in. We'd smell his cologne before he got in the sanctuary. 
Here comes the man of God walking in like a general, armed with the word of God, the Bible under his arm. And, and the, glow, the, the highlight of the week, the highlight of the week, everything that week during the week was a preliminary. Everything led to when he got up and donned that podium. That's the highlight of the week because at that point, we're going to hear the word of God preached by the man of God. And then at that point, you got to respond to what you've heard. Isn't that something? My God today, 1 Corinthians 2 and 14 says, but the natural man receive not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. The unsaved person, the person who fights the gospel, is foolishness to them. And they won't receive it. Praise the Lord. Neither can he know them, that natural man, uh, because they are spiritually discerned. But to us, we love it. Those of us who've received it, we love it. We love this life. We love living for the Lord. It makes sense. See, this is why you got to accept Hey, listen, whatever, uh, whatever revelation you have and whatever the knowledge is that you know thus far, live that. Act on what you know. Obey what you know, and the Lord will show you more. But God's not going to give you more if you're fighting what you know. If you're dismissing what you know, why are you asking God to show you how to, where to go and what to do when you won't do what you know to do? Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10, we find these words. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. That's Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. And the 10th verse. Well, let me show you. Let me, let me put it in its context. Verse 9 says, Even him, speaking of the Antichrist, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs, and look at this, and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And not only the Antichrist, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they, that they should, look at this, that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see, there are many people who are under the impression that when the rapture takes place, that many people will come to Jesus Christ after then. The truth is, if you are here, when the rapture takes place, you will not come to Jesus. There's not going to be a great revival of souls after the rapture. No. No. If that were the case, then why get saved before the rapture? No, no. And when the rapture takes place, everything is going to change because the church age will end. The Holy Spirit, as he is today, will be lifted from the earth. See, you don't know earth. You don't know the atmosphere. You don't know this world minus the influence of God the Holy Ghost. Even before we got saved, the Holy Ghost was influencing our environment. Things would be much more vicious and violent and wicked and hateful were there no Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit has an effect on society. Even folk who don't know him he has an effect on them. He has an effect on the weather. 
when the earth was dark and void and, and, and waters covered the face of the deep, God the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, the Spirit of God moved on the face of the deep. We don't know what it's like just as we, we don't know what it's like to live on this planet without the influence of the Holy Ghost. And thank God, and I'll tell you something, we don't know what it's like to live here with evil being unchallenged. We see great hints of evil. We see the Jeffrey Dahmers. We see wicked things happening. We see people being slaughtered. We see uh, the terrorist acts. We see uh, uh, things happen. We see how wicked man can be. Can you, ima can you imagine how wicked men would be without God the Holy Ghost? Well, after the rapture and the church is taken out of the world, the Bible says only he who now led it will let until he's taken out of the way. That is a reference to the church and God, the Holy Ghost. Once they are, uh, we are taken out of the way, the church and the Holy Spirit, then the Antichrist will take over without the influence of the church and the Holy Spirit. His coming. That's what he's speaking of. His coming will be filled with all deceivableness and lying wonders. There will be no preaching. Praise God. No. Listen, you won't hear Brother Wooden. Because Brother Wooden will be gone. <laughs> caught up in the rapture. Praise the Lord. You, you're going to come here trying to get in service. And uh, well, I wonder if they're having church tonight. And whatever, whatever member, whatever, whichever member of the church you find here after the rapture, just know that they missed it also. And that they're in just as bad a shape as you're in. Can you say amen? amen. So now, look at what he says. He says, and with verse 10, let me read it again. I'm going to get back to my text. It says, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish who miss the rapture. Look at this. Because they receive not the love of the truth. Because when the gospel was preached to them, they didn't receive it. They didn't receive it. Do you see that? Oh, this is hard, isn't it? Oh, this is because I'm, I'm messing with your theology. I thought I could have a chance. Of, I'm, now you're glad to find out that you don't, so you'll get right now. Uh, with all the, because they didn't love the truth, for this call, verse 11, look at this, for this call, notice this, God shall send them. Do you see that? Strong, uh, send them strong delusions. God will cause you. See, the same God who's sending you the truth now, God will send strong delusion that they might believe a lie. Praise the Lord. And you know what that lie is? It's the Antichrist's claim to be God. There is coming a man who will claim to be God and people are going to believe him. Oh, pastor, I'd never believe him. You believe, you believe today that a man can uh, uh, transform himself into a woman. You believe today that two men can marry. You didn't believe that a few years ago. You believe now that two women can marry. Notice, notice, notice how the devil is working on our minds. Notice the stuff we're beginning to believe. Notice what we're beginning to believe. All of this is a precursor. Satan is lying to us. Get, he's, he's jabbing us to, to, give the, to give the human race the knockout punch with the big lie. The big lie is when this Antichrist will claim to be God. But, um, but before we get to the big lie, he's got to get you to believe little lies. And you even hear saints now saying, well, you know, I don't want to be judgmental. You know, who am I to judge? If a man thinks he's a woman, who am I to tell him that he's not? A Christian? That's what you are. A sensible person? A common sense individual? That's who. That, that's the answer to the question. Uh, notice today we believe in a woman's right to choose. Christians, Christians now believe in a woman's right to choose to kill that unborn child on the inside of her. This was not true years ago, but we're buying the devil's lie. 
Do you hear me? So you don't want to be caught here after the rapture. Strong delusions will be sent. And notice verse 12. That they all might be condemned. See that? They're not condemned. All might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. What is my point? We are going to be judged on how we handle God's truth. Let me hurry up here. I, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm preaching to some Presbyterians and some two by fours. Say amen. Now the, the point here, the blindness comes when we fail to grow. Blindness comes when we fail to do what we should do. See, God judges us, and God knows how to say, by now, you should know better. You, you've seen enough to believe me by now. I've healed you enough to convince you that I'm a healer by now. And uh, if you don't believe it by now, then you know what? Chances are you won't ever believe it. See, you, so if you're not going to catch on, God knows how to write you off. Oh, pastor, that's, that's hard. Well, it is, but Psalms 95 and verse 8 says, Harden not your heart, as in the provocation, as and in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me, proved me, and saw my works, but they still didn't believe. They tested me, God says. They proved me. They saw my works, but they still wouldn't believe me. God said, 40 years long uh, was I grieved with this generation. And look at God's conclusion. And said, it is a people that do error in their hearts. And they have not known my ways unto whom, after I got tired of them, I swore into my wrath. In my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. I want you to know that God gives us all a certain amount of time. But saints, you have to catch on. You, you can't treat this thing like you got forever to mess up. You have to catch on. He looked at them folks and said, it's been 40 years. And I've shown you my power. I've, I've done everything that I was called to do. 40 years you saw my works. And look at us. We've seen some things. How many of us know that the Lord is real? And how many of us know that he's a healer? And how many of us have heard enough teachings to know that holiness is right? Well, what do you mean trying to act like you're still confused? confused on the basic issues, confused on basic biblical truth. I want you to know to be confused when you should come around can end up, can lead to rejection. Thank you for watching God First with Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. To experience this message in its entirety, call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day.